What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. We are in a new project and this one is going to be insane. It's going to be like the craziest project that we've ever done. I know I say that all the time and I always mean it, but this one I really mean it and you're going to see why pretty soon. So make sure you hit subscribe, hit subscribe, hit subscribe. Make sure you, make sure you hit subscribe. Stay tuned. All right, roll. Yes, sir. You filming? Yep. Oh, get the call. It's Josh Elder. Scoot, what's up? All right, so we have everything marked out here. You can see we've got these big X's where our footings are gonna go. This was all designed by an architect because we have this crazy roof structure going on. We have a 32-ish feet clear span underneath the roof, so we're gonna have to use trusses for this. So a lot of really complicated loads on this. We didn't wanna mess around with that. We hired an architect to do these drawings and they determined the size of the footings and the location. So we have 13 footings here and let me show you the different type of piles that we have going in here. To start off, we have three of these H port. What the f <laughs> <laughs> All right, get serious. To start off here, we have the HP four footings. These are a two and seven ace diameter pile. It's got a nine inch helix on it and these are gonna be able to handle up to 30,000 pounds of load. These are gonna be for areas where either you have, say, very soft soil, you have uh, just very few footings, or in this case, we have roof loads that are going on here, so we need these to be able to handle a ton of weight. Next up, we have the HP3 footing. This is a two and three eighths inch pile. It's got a nine inch helix on it. It's gonna be able to handle up to 15,000 pounds of load. This is gonna be the most common pile that you'll use for residential decks. This is the one that we use the most often. Let me show you the next one. Lastly, we have the HP2 footing. This is also a two and three eighths inch pile. It's only got a six inch helix though. So this is gonna be able to hold about eight to 10,000 pounds when driven to the right torque. But with this smaller helix, it's able to go through more rocky ground. If the HP3 is hitting a lot of rock and it's bouncing around, you can use this. It's gonna drive a smaller area so it'll disturb less ground. We don't use a whole lot of these, but they have them with them just in case we need to swap one out. We can use the HP2 on certain footings. So it's a good option to have. They always have them on the truck. So we can make sure we get this thing done. Okay. You got the helical piles going in, but what's the deal with no inspection? How are, we, how, are we? how are you not getting this inspected? How does that even work? Here is how it works. They just gave us the report for our last project, which we will submit to the township. It's got all of our specs here, all of the torque for each footing that was installed, the size, and check this out. What's that, Pat, what's that? What is that? It's Damn. a golden ticket in the construction industry. It's a stamp from an engineer. You give this to the township, they don't care what the heck's going on. They say, there's a stamp on here, we're not liable anymore. A engineer has vouched for this, saying that it is built to the right load capacity. So that is why we can bypass inspections and keep this job moving along. Now let's see how they go in. and now we're on to the framing stage. And because we've covered the joists and the beams a lot recently, we're gonna mostly focus on some of the fun framing details like a day bed, an outdoor kitchen, a bench seat, a fireplace wall, all that really cool stuff. So we'll show you the joists and the beams going in, but we'll catch up with you once we get to the fun stuff.
we have this deck frame all wrapped up. A lot of the stuff you've seen before, it's pretty much the same thing on this project. I'm gonna go over a couple things real quickly about what we did differently because this is so high off the ground. But besides that, we're gonna focus on some of the really cool framing details that are gonna be on top of the deck. We have a day bed, we have a bench seat, we have an outdoor kitchen, and we have a privacy wall that's gonna house a fireplace. It's gonna be really cool. Some of the kind of different things that we're doing on this project. So we're gonna focus on that. Stay tuned. All right, so on these steps, we obviously have a lot more steps than usual here. So we had an architect draw up the plans for this project. They just took our design and did all the spec calculations for us. And one thing they spec'd out a little bit differently was instead of six by six posts that we normally do to anchor our stairs, they had a concrete pad at the bottom of the stairs. So that's one thing that we did a little bit differently. Let me show you a couple other things. So here we are underneath the deck. It's kind of nice. We can pretty much walk under here. Well, almost. But because this is high off the ground, we wanted to have a little bit of extra bracing here. So you can see Pat actually installed these, some diagonal bracing across our posts. Keeps it locked in for justice. And instead of notching the post to accept our beam, check out what we did. Because we have a tripled two by 10 here, we have it sitting directly on top of the six by six. And then we have this scab across the back. We have it lagged in top and bottom. And then we put this 45 degree angle on here so that water isn't gonna sit on that end green. It's gonna run right off. So that's just a couple of the things that we did a little bit differently. Now let's get to the fun stuff. We've got this little knee wall that we just installed, and this is gonna be the back for our bench seat. Check out the rendering. So you can see in the rendering, we have a bench seat with a back, a day bed, plus an outdoor kitchen. It's all gonna intersect in this area. So we wanted to get this up first, and then kind of mess around with some measurements, figure everything out, and we have it figured out now. So what we're gonna do is build everything on the ground. It's just a series of walls and tops for the bench seat, and uh, then we can just install them. So we're gonna go ahead and do that on the ground, pick them up, put them in there, bing, bang, boom, super easy, and then we'll be done. All right, so we have a couple of these elements pre-built. Here's the front and back of our day bed, and here's the top. Now, why in the heck? This one's a little shorter than that one. And this is like overhanging like this. What's up with that? We'll show you in one second. Let's get it up there. All right, so you can see our back wall is hitting that six by. This is continuing straight to our little knee wall, which is gonna be the back rest. So it's two and a quarter inches longer. So we've compensated for that. We've also compensated for that on the top, which will go right on top. We need to take off this siding and then we can install this flush to the wall. We're coming out 46 inches. So that once we have the trim and our overhang on the top, we're gonna to be at 48 inches. Nice day bed. <laughs> Where's everything going? Come on. There's a fridge and a kitchen. And a I grill. was coming here looking at you for answers. What's going here? A what is this? A wall. This wall? A two before. Two before wall. And what's going here? A grill and a and a. Oh, this is the outdoor fridge. kitchen. Hey. You need to tell me where you want everything. Right here. Okay. All right. So <laughs> I can't stop talking in like a really crazy Philly accent. I don't know why. Big Kate Winslet fan. Yeah, I've been watching Mayor Easttown. They're trying to find who murdered the the daughter of that that guy, and they're just eating hoagies and stuff the whole time. I gotta stop. I gotta stop. Okay, we have the day bed installed there. We have the back of our sitting wall here. You can be able to rest some pillows there. It's gonna be nice. Here we have the kitchen, and on the kitchen. We're gonna have some nice counter space in this corner here, like this, but we can't put any of the appliances here because the bench seat's gonna run into it. So 
we need to figure out space for a fridge, which is 24 inches, and then the grill, which is 40. We're gonna have an access door underneath the grill, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I wanna have the fridge basically close to this. So right off of here, I guess. Right off of that? I guess so. Okay. I mean, it's gonna be pretty close. Okay. Let's put an inch and a half. Let's put another stud there. Another stud. Okay. So I'll get 25 and a half. Yeah. Okay. So our next stud will be here. Okay, we got 47. Oh, cool. Okay. So it's the center, maybe? Oh. Uh, we can just add another stud here. Okay. Here's going to be the edge of our fridge. We got a stud there. Now, in between, well, we got to account for the one inch overhang on our trim. So we got 48 inches. We made a mark at 24. Grill is 40. So, got a mark there. I got a mark here. I work on the back and tie this together. Okay. So that's the front. We have our layout. The front is the important part because we're gonna have to have cutouts for our appliances. The back can just be a straight studded wall. Then we'll tie the two ends together. And uh, what's it gonna be? Locked in for justice. All right, so we've got this kitchen all wrapped up and we made a slight adjustment. We decided to switch the grill and the fridge placement. So you can see grill in the center now. We had it on this side, but this way, you have counter space on both sides. I think this is really nice. We're gonna have that 40 inch grill here, fridge there, counter space, counter space, chill spot, day bed. It's gonna be freaking sweet. And next up, we're putting these huge beams up, so. Get ready for that. Tony, what do we got going on here? Feature wall. Feature wall. Yeah. So we all kinds Future of Future wall? Feature. Feature wall. All kinds Love of that. Ones. We got the dimensions for the TV, fireplace. What size TV are you going with? 42 times 2. Uh, plus an inch. 85 inch. 85? Oh my god. 85 inch TV. So it's 74 inches wide, 42 inches high. It's gonna be your big boy. So we have this marked out here it's going to be about six inches down from the top that brings us down to here we'll have about a four inch gap then a five inch mantle then we've got a little bit of space and we offset split the difference of the fireplace so here's our rough opening for the fireplace it's going to sit right in here and then it's got a large surround on it so whew, it's going to be looking real nice i think it's going to be a home run and uh, it's gonna be sweet. I just picture myself when the fire's going. You can just kind of huddle up with somebody, and, and the warmth will stay uh, with stay you. Stay with you. And can you imagine so. a couch and a pillow? I thought you were gonna say, can you imagine a cow? A cow? Can you imagine a cow? <laughs> no. I can. We've got this all figured out. We're still, we're still kind of, well I am, kind of playing around with some details on the finishes here. Maybe we're going to do some marble tile on it, because I saw they had that inside. It got my, my mind's just going absolutely nuts right now with ideas. I love it. And over here, to the side, what is this going to be? Hideaway screen. We're going to have the hideaway screens, both sides, and we're going to frame this out so it's almost like a window. We're going to have a five and a half inch jam on this gonna be jamming out and then the screen's gonna be right in the center of it so it's gonna look beautiful we're gonna backlight that so the glow is just gonna kind of come through the screen it's gonna be wild and this 85 inch TV baby whew, 
All right, so last couple things that we had to do on this frame, we've got these beams built out. That's gonna be a really cool detail here. We have the beams coming out and they're all gonna look like they're the same size and just come down. It's gonna be freaking awesome. We also had Pat stain all this stuff black so that you don't see it in the quarter inch gaps between all of our trim. So we're now on to the next step, which is gonna be framing out this roof with some huge freaking trusses. So make sure you stay tuned for the next vlog, baby. It's gonna be sick. But until next time, make sure you hit subscribe and this is Premier Outdoor Living.